Hello friends, chapter 6, learning class 11 psychology, part 6 in which we shall talk of the key processes in learning and the transfer in learning, be it conditioning, classical or operant or other forms of learning. Certain processes have been observed in all of them and therefore they are known as the key processes of learning. These are 5 in number. The process of reinforcement, extinction, spontaneous recovery, generalization and discrimination. Let's talk about each of these in detail. Reinforcement. Reinforcement in simple terms is the process of administering a reinforcer to a subject by an experimenter. And what is a reinforcer? A reinforcer is anything that helps you get the desired response. It can either be a reward, a punishment, it can be positive or negative, it can be a simple or a complex reinforcer. Let's look at the technical definitions now. The stimuli that increase the possibility and probability of a response that precedes them is known as a reinforcer. It can be positive, negative, primary or secondary. The desired response is shaped by reinforcing successive approximations to it. The positive reinforcers are the ones which being given increase the possibility of the response. For instance, food, water, praise, a hike, a promotion, more salary. Negative reinforcers are the ones which if taken out of the experiment increase the possibility of occurrence of a response. For example, any kind of punishment discomfort in a lab situation, electric shocks, a very very cold environment, abusive words, anything that makes you uncomfortable. Primary reinforcers, these are the biological determinants, these are the ones that are naturally associated with an organism. For example, water to quench thirst, food to satisfy hunger and secondary reinforcers are the ones that are not biological determinants. However, they have come to acquire the characteristics of a reinforcer by the means of their constant interaction with the environment. The subject has come to learn their importance because of certain experiences. For instance, praise, money, other kinds of rewards. So, the process, the key process in this is that as the reinforcement is provided, the probability of occurrence of a desired response increases. The second key process in learning is extinction. As the name makes it clear, extinction involves the process where the reinforcement is extinguished or taken away or stopped and hence the response gets diminished. By definition, extinction is the disappearance of a learned response due to removal of reinforcement. In psychological experiments in the labs, a concept of resistance to extinction has been observed which is based on the number of reinforced trials, the amount of reinforcement being given, the delay in reinforcement and also continuous or partial reinforcement schedules. Now, extinction in an experiment, let us see it. We all remember the experiment by Skinner where the rat had to press a lever to get the food pellets. Now, imagine a situation where the food pellets stopped coming even when the rat is pressing the lever. So, there is a situation, the rat presses the lever, the food pellet comes and this continues for certain trials and conditioning happens. Now, the rat keeps on pressing and the food pellets do not come for successive trials. Gradually, the rat starts disassociating the lever pressing with the food pellet coming and he stops pressing the lever. This is extinction of the response. Now, how many food pallets were being given? How frequently they were stopped? Were they being given in between and stopped in between? All this will determine the strength of extinction, that is the resistance to extinction. How much was the resistance? Research indicates an inverse relationship between the amount of reinforcement and 
the resistance to extinction. That is, if more food pellets were being given to the rat, he would be able to forget the association more easily and more quickly. Here is a graph where you can see the extinction being plotted on x and y axis. The reinforcer stops and the response drops gradually. The third key concept is the process of journalization. Journalization? Well, the process where we learn to apply a learning established in a certain situation to other situations as well. Let's look at it from psychological angle. The process of responding to similar stimuli in a similar manner. The process when a learned response occurs to a new stimulus. For example, as a kid, you were told this is green, this is green, this is green and this is also green. You were told this to different shades of green. You learned that the grass in a lawn is green, so is the color of a sari of your mother. It is also green when you see a mango candy. The green is the color in the rainbow as well, but all of them are different hues. Green is your uh, water when it is very old and when there is certain kind of uh, deposition in it. These different shades but were established in your mind as one particular green. Red is, the sky is red after the sun has set and the night is about to begin. At the dusk time, the traffic light is also red. Your apple is also red. These are different shades and different hues. One of these examples you can see on your screen. Different hues but you generalize it to one color. In a lab situation, remember the Pavlovian dog. He was conditioned to elicit saliva on the sounding of a bell. Now, if the bell was changed to maybe a telephone bell, if the ringing was something different, the dog would still salivate because the dog comes to generalize a bell, be it of different kinds. The next key concept is the concept of discrimination. This is opposite to the practice or the process of generalization. This is the process where the subjects learn to discriminate between certain similar stimuli. Let's look at the definition. The ability to differentiate between similar stimuli. It depends upon the discriminative capacity of different individuals or different organisms. It would entail the perceptual abilities, the cognitive abilities and also other thinking and related memory activities of a person to establish the process of discrimination. A child learns to discriminate between faces at a very early stage. He learns to discriminate between a male and a female, between a young child and an older person. A child learns to say Didi to a younger female and auntie to an older one. All of them are females, but the process of discrimination has occurred. The process of discrimination has been established by many lab experiments and researches. Let us take one of these. In an operant conditioning experiment, pigeons were trained to peck at a door for food to appear. A pigeon was placed before a door and the food would not be given. By just chance, the pigeon would start pecking at the door and the food would appear. After continuous trials, the pigeon learned that pecking at the door gives me food. So the stimulus response relationship got conditioned. Now, this was a red door. In another situation, the same pigeon was now given a door which was not red, which was plain or say grey in colour as is visible in this picture. Pecking on this non-red door or grey door did not elicit any food pellets being given to the pigeon. So the pigeon now is able to discriminate between the red door and the non-coloured door. So that the picture shows he pecks only at the red door and does not peck at the door in which the colour does not appear. This kind of discrimination is also established in children. In kids, you know that your toffees are only placed in a jar which has say a blue cap which is long in shape and is a certain size. They are not placed in a glass which is covered with a cap. So this discrimination a child learns to establish. But the discrimination process happens due to practice sessions or due to observations. It happens as your cognitive processes progress. Rats, pigeons, monkeys, chimpanzees have all been shown to understand the process of discrimination 
and they successfully understand and display it in experiments conducted in laboratory situations. Another key concept of learning is spontaneous recovery. As the name indicates, it is the quick coming back or quick establishment of a response after a time has lapsed of extinguishing of this response. So, when the process of extinction occurs, you let some time pass and again start reinforcing. So, even without the reinforcer, the conditioned response automatically occurs. This is known as the process of spontaneous recovery. The strength of spontaneous recovery has been found to be related to the amount of time lapse between the extinguished trials and the new trials. This graph shows you the process. The graph which is going up is the acquisition trials. So, the gradual pairing of the CS with the CR leads the conditioning to happen. Now, there is no stimulus response relationship because the reinforcement is taken out. So, the extinction happens. But after extinction, if you let some time pass and you bring the situation uh, and you bring the subject back to the situation in the laboratory, the subject immediately gives you a conditioned response. This is the process of spontaneous recovery. Have you seen this in your real life as well? Well, yes. You learnt to play badminton as a child, say, and you do not play it for 10 years. But if you are given a racket and a shuttlecock in your hand, after 10 years, you would immediately be able to recall the task. So, this is spontaneous recovery even after the extinction has occurred. This is not operant conditioning because no reinforcements are being given. But in all the forms of learning, these five key processes of reinforcement, extinction, spontaneous recovery, generalization and discrimination have been found to occur. Now friends, let us come to the second topic of this part, which is transfer of learning. It has also been known as transfer of training or transfer effects. Defined in simple terms, transfer of training, transfer of learning or transfer effects are the effects of prior learning to new learning. Whenever you have learnt something and now you are learning something new, does it hinder, does it help you or does it have no effects on it? This is where transfer of learning is observed and researched. Kinds of transfer of learning. There are three kinds of transfer of learning that have been found through laboratory experiments and researches. These are positive transfer, negative transfer and zero transfer. Experiments are used to study the transfer effects. Positive transfer is known to occur when a previous learning helps you in a learning of a new concept. Negative transfer is said to occur when a previous learning hinders your learning of a new concept. And zero transfer implies when the previous learning has no impact or effect on gaining of a new learning concept. Let us take examples. If somebody who is good at drawing, this person would also be good at painting or say embroidery, this is a positive transfer. However, if you have learnt to drive a bicycle and then you learn to drive a scooter, earlier days people used to have problem that the brakes of a bicycle were in hand. However, for a scooter, the clutch or the accelerator was in hand. So, where in cycle you would press a brake to slow down the cycle, in a scooter you would press something in your hand to increase the speed of the scooter. Here the negative transfer occurred where if you knew to drive a cycle, driving a scooter became difficult to learn because of the different nature of the things placed at the same place that is in your hands. However, this also had a positive transfer. As in, if you learn to drive a cycle, you would know the principle of balance. You would have practiced enough to move straight on a road and this would have a positive transfer in learning of a scooter. So, when learning aids the learning of a new concept, it is positive transfer and when it hinders it, it is negative transfer. There are also another two kinds of transfer. This is journal and specific transfer. Journal transfer is when prior learning predisposes one to learn another task in a better manner. For instance, warm up effects. You might have seen cricketers when they come to the ground, they start jogging, moving their hands around, they start moving their body and warming up. This helps them to play better, to bat better or to bowl better or to field better. 
So, this is a transfer of learning where the practice or warming up of the body helps you in your game as well. Whenever you do a new task, you would see that initially you are uncomfortable. With gradual passing of time, you become very comfortable in the task. Anything like uh, making a drawing, first your pen does not move very nicely. But after 2 3 minutes, the warm up effect occurs or the transfer of learning from the initial 2 minutes of practice occur in the entire painting and you start it in a better manner. The second type is specific transfer, where the effects of task A are transferred to task B. How much does learning of one language help you in learning of another language is example of a specific task. If learning Sanskrit or Urdu made learning Hindi easier or vice versa, it is specific transfer. If learning to run or jog make it easier to learn certain sports, it is again a specific transfer. It would depend upon the nature of stimuli required for the two tasks, the nature of responses required for the two tasks and the nature of serial of associations between the stimulus and the response in the two tasks. Let us take an example for this. Do you think that somebody who knows to cook really well would be able to learn to read and write nicely? No. So, that means there is a zero transfer of learning from cooking to reading and writing abilities. Now, do you think that somebody who is good at spellings would also be good at calculations? Well, again no. Then we would say again it is a zero example of an example of zero transfer of learning. But hey, hold on, is it actually true? Any kind of concept that we acquire gives us confidence, gives us certain associations in our mind which helps in learning a new task. So, that means that by default journal transfer of learning always occurs even if there are specific tasks which are totally different. So, some transfer is always there. So, theoretically the concept of zero transfer does not exist. However, there are specific transfers which occur like we discussed driving of a cycle to a scooter, good painting to making good experimental designs, good painting to making good uh, maps in geography or history or making good uh, models for science experiments. All this is specific transfer. Students, in this part of chapter 6 learning, we talked about the key processes of learning which are generalization, discrimination, spontaneous recovery, extinction and reinforcement. And we also spoke about the transfer of learning which is journal or specific in nature which can be positive, negative and zero transfer. And we saw that by default journal transfer of learning always occurs and the processes of learning are common to conditioning as well as different kinds of learning be it verbal learning, observational learning, concept learning, skill learning or cognitive learning. In the next part, we shall talk of the factors that facilitate learning. Thank you.